we started off by driving 10 hours or so to the visitor center at Agro Bay and um, stopping just before that at the Twilight Resort where we had booked a uh, shuttle for tomorrow morning. We asked the man if he would be willing to take us tonight and so he did. So we are here at Argentois Harbour, Argentois Bay uh, and we'll start our hike tomorrow. Our drive-in was rather crazy. It's a 14k dirt road and he was driving like it was a, a roller coaster. Uh, very fast and we were both feeling rather pukey when we got here. So uh, tomorrow morning we will be leaving our tent and all our stuff for sleeping here and then heading north and returning back here um, for to sleep tomorrow night and then we'll start south towards Agro Bay. So we've got six days to hike starting tomorrow morning and we'll see how it goes. So we had a pretty eventful evening last night after we went to bed uh, at about midnight. Um, the thunder started in the distance, in the very far distance, but it came closer and closer and closer and within about an hour or so, we're not sure exactly, it was really close and uh, it started to pour and within a very, very short time, we had puddles forming in our vestibules and then Cheryl realized that we had puddles under our tent. You could touch the floor and feel the water flowing between our thermorests. So we decided to, um, well, stay put for the time being. And then when the storm passed and it was barely raining, we decided we were going to move the tent. And somehow, I don't know how we did this, but we ended up having put the, uh, the tent originally was in a big... Uh, depression essentially it didn't look like that at the time when we put our tent up but it sure was so everywhere else was dry we moved it up the hill so we were kind of on the hill uh, but it was incredible the amount of water it was like an inch deep where our tent had been everything inside inside stayed dry so we got lucky there and then we re uh, like re pegged the tent and and then went back to bed so that was a little bit crazy and then um, this morning we decided we were going to hike so hike north of Gargantois so we're at Gargantois about 300 meters from the um, the parking lot or where we were dropped off dropped off by the shuttle yesterday um, so we decided we we're gonna hike north because I wanted to do the entire trail so from Gargantois we thought it was 7k um, from our site approximately up to Chalfant Cove and then there's another sort of little fork which you could do to uh, through Warp Bay to Devil's Chair or something like that um, but we realized that the, t the 7k was actually 2k away from us so that was even 9k so when we did the, the first part we did go to Chalfant Cove it was really underwhelming uh, there was a lot of walking through the forest that was just tree after tree and boring trail and we thought it was never going to end um, when we came out to Chalfant Cove it was it was just uh Oh, it wasn't great. So anyway, it was, like I said, underwhelming. Um, we turned around. The campsites there were very small. We couldn't see a fire pit. Um, they did have, there, wasn't, there was a toilet at one of them. So I, I don't know. Anyway, so we came back. Um, and round trip took us about just under seven hours. We stopped once for a short time for lunch. A couple times, you know, to adjust boots and that kind of thing. But really, we were on the go for much of that time. Um, and the hike back was pretty boring because we came back the exact same way. Our feet were getting tired, sore, the ground is hard, and so the, everything just was hurting. So we did about, about somewhere over 20k, we're not sure exactly. We left most of our stuff here actually. We left the sleeping stuff, um, all of our food except what we needed for today. Um, and of course we brought our packs, our sleeping bags, water, um, first aid kit and that kind of stuff but um, we didn't have to hike with as much weight today. So anyway, um, that's where we are. We're hoping to use a stick stove tonight to cook some dinner, have a campfire to go find some wood. The weather is nice. Hopefully it stays like this tonight. We get a good night's sleep because we didn't sleep much last night. 
Uh, and then tomorrow we start the probably what will be the hardest day, the most elevation gain, heading south, going through Rhyolite Cove. Um, it's going to be beautiful, but it's going to be tough with the weight on our backs. Um, so check back in another time. So it's the afternoon of day three and we are at our campsite, um, we are not sure exactly where, it's past Rhyolite Cove, so south of Rhyolite Cove. We didn't get as far as we had hoped to today, we hiked from Gargantois and we're hoping to get halfway to Orphan Lake. Halfway would be about 10k or so we estimated. Um, we only managed to walk 8.8 .8 kilometers, it was really tough going, uh, it was, call it hiking, but a lot of um, bouldering, picking your root on these huge logs, uh, very, very hard going, very technical stuff. And with big packs on our backs, we weren't going very fast. Um, and it just, it just was further than we expected it to be. So we have stopped here. We're sort of doubtful that we're actually gonna make it all the way to Agua Bay to the end in the time that we thought, which was finishing on Wednesday night, which would be our seventh um, seventh day and sixth day of hiking so it looks like we'll actually be hiking on our last day the eighth day which is supposed to be the day that we're driving home so we'll see what happens there um, once we pass Orphan Lake there are quite a few places where the, the trail actually becomes it comes very very close to the highway so there would be lots of opportunities to get out there if we decided we had to call it quits and not make it to the end we just have to rely on the kindness of some stranger to um, drive us the last little bit to the uh, visitor center where our car is. So we'll see, hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully we're able to make up the lost time, but it looks like tomorrow is gonna be another tough day. Uh, hopefully we get we go a little further than we did today, but we'll see, we really don't know. We're kind of stuck here. Um, the next campsite from here is up a big cliff and we didn't know, it's gonna be at least a couple more hours of hiking and we figured that at this point in the day, we were starting to get tired and um, Doing another couple of hours of technical hiking is probably not a good idea. That's, that's where we're more likely to get hurt, um, fall, whatever. So we decided to call it, day, call it a day here. Um, we're gonna use my stick stove again to cook some dinner tonight. I don't know if we're gonna have a campfire. We're gonna go to bed early tonight, get up early tomorrow, and hope to be on the trail at 7.30. So we have more daylight hours tomorrow to hike. Um, and then we'll see what the terrain is like. I mean, if it's really hard, we're not gonna go much further than we did today um, but we will see and uh, the weather has been great so far except for that first night with thunderstorms uh, it's been cool and uh, today a mix of sun and cloud um, so it's been actually a good temperature to hike um, anyway so that's where we are and I'll just give you a little panorama of uh, where we are uh, where our campsite is
a beautiful cove. Um, we had a bit of a rough go this morning. We thought, uh, we got up early, we were leaving our camps at about 8.15 and um, we were heading for what we hoped would be our campsite last night. And it didn't take too long for us to lose the trail. Um, we were had to climb on huge boulders, like on the side of the cliff into the water. And we thought, no way, this can't be right. Even though the flag, the marker seemed to make it look like we should be going that way. So we, um, we, we decided. Hi, Cheryl. We decided to uh, go up into the woods thinking we could find the trail there. Uh, and we never did. We were bushwhacking and we didn't know what we were going to do. Cheryl wondered if we were going to have to hike back to the beginning, like Gargantua, Gargantua, and start to like, get out that way. Anyway, we went back to where we knew the flag was. The water has one more minute here and I'll do it. Um, the, um, we went back to where the blue flag was, and uh, it's not the flag, a marker. And um, from there we decided we would go back down all those boulders and pick our way and um, go where we thought was too treacherous, treacherous, but apparently when we got around the corner, we saw some of the ships and then we realized that that was actually the way we were supposed to go. We got back onto the trail and it was still some tough going for a while. And the last hour or so has been easier through the woods. And anyway, it's lunchtime, so I'm gonna eat. Well, it's the morning of day four of the hiking, I guess it's day five of our trip. And we are just about at Orphan Lake. We had hoped to get there when we first started the trip on our second day. We actually got there on our third day of hiking. No, it was our second day of hiking. Uh, yes, we are still, we're not quite there. So we might have a kilometer, I think it's less. Um, and we think the trail is going to get slightly less than hope once we pass Orphan Lake. We'll see. Uh, we had a good night last night. We slept well. We were up in the dark, which is kind of weird. Um, but obviously you can see it's light now. We had some wave action again this morning. It's quite beautiful. Um, and we're not sure how far we're going to get today. We'll see. We'll just take it campsite by campsite and uh, get as close as we can to Robertson Cove, which is a really pretty little spot that I've seen at. There's nothing, I think it's 14 kilometers or maybe longer, I'm not sure. There's no more sites for quite a ways. So hopefully we have the Robertson Cove, we'll see if we do. If not, we would just before that. Um, and we're thinking we've got four more days of hiking uh, before we're back in the visitor center. So anyway, we'll see. And I'm sliding off this rock, so I need to stop. So we have the most amazing campsite for tonight. It's at Robertson Cove. I've stayed here before. My husband and kids, we hiked north from Catherine Cove for a couple kilometers and stayed here. Uh, instead, we came from the north heading south. So I'm standing kind of like on a spit. Um, I'm facing, well, that was south. I'm heading towards the north. You will see our tent. There's a spit of sand comes out to this island. So we walked across the sand and we've set up our tent right in that little really protected area. There's no noise from the wind. It's amazing. The huge rock I'm standing on protects from the wind. So now we're heading towards the north and that the 
biggest peak that you see there far to the left, I think that's um, bald, oh, what's it called? I forget, bald something. Anyway, uh, it was the most significant climb that we did today. Anyway, I'm gonna come in a little bit here. So we're gonna see if we can get in there a little bit, it'll be warmer, uh, and make ourselves feel slightly more clean than we are right now. Very sweaty, there's the tent in there. And I'll pick up the video in a minute and show the other half of the campsite. So here's the other part of the campsite, coming into where we have the tarp in case it rains. Gotta be careful of the stuff here, the tent. There's the spit of land. Oh, there's Cheryl. There's the spit of land going to the other side. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> so this is facing south. When I was here with my husband and kids, we actually set up our tent right here on the middle of the sand. It's a little too windy for that today. And then here we're heading north. And then back at the end of this sandy spit, actually on the other side of the coastal trail, is uh, where the toilet is. And there's another fire pit over there, but we won't be there. We'll be over here tonight except for using that toilet. So anyway, it's a fantastic site, Robertson Cove.
just had lunch here at Agawa Point. We've hiked about six or so kilometers today. We're hoping to finish today, which is the day we originally planned, Wednesday. We made a lot of progress yesterday. We hiked about 14 kilometers and got ourselves back on track. Um, so we've had a tough morning, technical uh, hiking, a lot of ups and downs, squeezing through rock faces, some crazy stuff. Um, I'm guessing we have about three more hard and then the last three, once we hit Agawa River, back to the campground or the visitor center should be easy. It's just uh, beach, sand beach. Compared to what we've been doing, uh, <laughs> that's very easy. So we will see. Um, hopefully we can make it all the way. We'd like to get there before 5 p.m. That's when the visitor center closes. We'd like to talk to the park interpreter and just let her know how it went. She said drop by when you're, when you're done. But if not, we will, um, no, in, in any case, we're staying here tomorrow night. So, i uh, sorry, we're staying here tonight. So tomorrow morning, um, we could go to the visitor center at nine, check in, and then uh, the long 10 hour drive home. But uh, anyway, we'll see. The views have been amazing today. Right? This is, uh, this is not like some of them. We went and visited the pictographs and there was so much water. Uh, slamming against the rocks you would never uh, try to see them. We saw the first few, uh, the first couple actually you can see just from standing at the bottom of the stairs but um, otherwise just too dangerous. Anyway that's it for now. I will check back in tonight once we are hopefully back at our car and done. Thought, well, we 
today we reached the pictographs. The pictographs is a 350 meter side trail that we did. Um, we, we went down to the bottom of the trail. We did not go to the rock where the pictographs are because the water was spraying up. It was so crazy. I've never seen it like that. I would never go on there. Um, and actually they closed the trail this time of year just because the water gets too big. It's just not the same. So the bottom of the stairs before the pictographs, you can just stand there and you can see the first one.